correct. No. That's the issue I have. Answer the question. Okay. Jesus authority or Paul's authority? Uh, that's that's very simple the question. A simple question. You can also do it. That's all not the question. What did Jesus say? All authority was given to me by the Father. So, so who's authority? Jesus authority or Paul's authority? Who should be taken? And Jesus, who has all authority in heaven and earth, commissioned Paul to be the the apostle to the Gentiles, who wrote, which became scripture, the New Testament, which said, "Husbands love your wife like Christ loved the church." Paul never met Jesus. Paul never met Jesus. Paul never met Paul on the road to Damascus. On the road to Damascus, what a vision! A vision. Can you take his word for it? Can you take his word for it? If I was to demonstrate to you that Paul cannot be trusted, then what would you say? No, no, I'll prove you wrong. I'll prove you wrong. And this is a challenge. This is a challenge to all the Christians. This is a challenge to all the Christians. Prove it. Show me what it says. Prove it. If I was to disprove to you that Paul is not to be trusted, prove it. You take Paul's word for me. Quran, 86.6. 86.6. Let's go to 86. Six, six. He's 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 just made a Very direct. Trump, I'm asking you, if I was to prove Does that, that say if I touch you in the back, you get pregnant? Would you take his word for it? So why are you adding things I'll to it? I'm just why lying. No, no, no. Oh, I'm why are you adding things to it? I'm just lying. What's your definition? What's your definition? How are you doing the scene on it? I'm applying the Quran. Who are you doing by the Quran? I'll listen to you, but the word of God is the final authority. Could you open up 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 2 to 3? Okay, whatever. Is what's he? Sorry, what's your name? Chris. Chris. Yeah. My name's Rahan. Nice to meet you. Okay. Did he, did he take all oh, by the way, this is not interrogation. Yeah. It's the way how you came across. You came across. It's like as though you know you don't want to have a nice conversation. I gave that back to you. You understand? No, if, you want to, if you want to have a nice conversation, one, one, I'll have a nice conversation. one Corinthians really? fifteen. Yes. I was first Corinthians I, chapter I fifteen. Be heard, no. Was no, no, problem. no, don't worry. Which don't verse? Worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, let me see. Okay, so this is Paul, right? Oh, hold on, there's, there's, sorry, sorry. There's a... Let's read from verse 1. Okay, so read it out. Now, brothers and sisters, go on. So, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 2 to 3. Oh, 1 to 4. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel yes. I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. Yes. By this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preach to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, mm -hmm. that Christ died for your sins according to the scripture, mm -hmm. that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according, according to the scripture. Now, hit. Okay. so hang on there. So what is Paul saying? Paul is saying that there's a prophecy in the scriptures where Jesus will be buried and will be raised on the third day. I challenge you to find me anywhere in the Old Testament of that prophecy. Okay. Show me. And you got time? Get in your phone. Okay. That's what Paul's claiming. Paul claims that there's a prophecy. And by the way, the the four gospels was not written during the time of Paul. So don't tell me the scriptures it refers to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Right? He's saying, he's saying according to the scriptures. What, the, what scriptures? What scriptures was he Who talking about? So uh, look at that. Look at that. Just carry on. So go on. So according to the scriptures, which is referring to the Old Testament, right? Do I annoy you, Sokol, when you're speaking to people? Do I do I interrupt you, Sokol? Yes, he's a Christian. Do I interrupt you when you speak? Who's drunk? I don't. Who's drunk? I don't. Who's drunk? I got pregnant. So it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Get away! Carry on. Usually I'm very soft, but people like you, I can't do it. Carry on. Okay. So look, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Do you know what? If you speak as well, why don't we take your clothes off and run around? Do it. Just carry on. Go on, go on. Let's see. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So according to according to Paul. There's a prophecy that Jesus will be raised on the third day. Can you find me in the Old Testament? So does it say in the Old Testament? Yeah, in the Old Testament. In the scripture? You should know this. You should know this. I know this. You should know this. You know? Show me. Do you want me to tell you? Do you want me to tell you? No, no, no. Let him ponder. Let him ponder. Let him ponder. Let him ponder. Can you find me anywhere in the Old Testament where Jesus, where Jesus is prophesied to be raised on the third day? will be buried. According to Paul, there's a prophecy in the Old Testament. Where is it? So I don't know if I, if You don't know. No, so what you, no. Right, good. So I'm telling you there is none because I read the Bible. I read the Bible. There is none. Yeah, I went through the Christian school system from primary school to secondary school. I was compelled to read the whole Bible. There's not a single prophecy where 
Jesus will be prophesied to be raised on the third day. Now, you lot may say, yeah, but there's a prophecy about the crucifixion. I'm not talking about the crucifixion. I'm talking about the resurrection. Raising on the third day. I can't find any prophecy in the Old Testament. So why, was I, why should I trust Paul's word? Then? But I do know that Jesus said that you search the scriptures because you think in, in them you'll find eternal life, but you fail to see that they point to me. And in yeah. the Old Testament, we got the story of Jonah about the three days and the three nights. Yeah. So that. So do you want to put? Do, so do you want to talk about? Good. Wait, 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 wait. That's good. No, that's good. That's good. That's good. But I, I believe you're not. Okay, so would you say at this moment in time, you can't find me anywhere in the Old Testament of the prophecy like this? That uh, Jesus will be resurrected. The, the one that came to mind is the story of Jonah. That's, that's, that's got nothing to do with the Old well, Testament. Well, if it points to Jesus... By the way, and then we, we Muslims have no problem accepting the words of Jesus. Anything that, anything that doesn't contradict with Islam, we take on face value, no problem. Anything that contradicts, we don't take these words to be from Jesus, okay? Because our criteria... Our Mahamin, our quality control is the Quran. Yeah. So we have no problem accepting there are some remnants of truth in the Bible. It's no problem. But there are some falsehood as well. Okay? okay. So what I'm so, telling you is so, uh, I guess Yeah. So you mentioned about the sign of Jonah, correct? Yeah, I did. Okay. Because of what Jesus said about right. the, the Good. scriptures point so to can, him. So can you concede at this time right now you can't find any Old Testament prophecy about the resurrection of Jesus. So the, the story day. of Jonah is that's got nothing to do to what Jesus. That's got nothing to do. That's got nothing to do with the point I'm making. I'm talking about Paul, not Jesus. Paul is making the claim that there's a there's a prophecy in the Old Testament that Jesus will be buried and he will be resurrected on the third day. I want okay. that. Where is this prophecy in the Old so, Testament? So my question in fact then would be, why don't you believe the angel? That's got nothing to do with the point. Well, it does because no you're problem. denying no the authority. No problem, Chris. No problem, Chris. No problem, Chris. We, 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 we'll move on. But first, could you concede? The New Testament. Could you concede? The New Testament that you've got is not the Injil. It has certain no, no, truths in it. Brother, 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 brother. No, 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 no. I want him to answer the question. Do you, do you first concede that you can't find any Old Testament prophecy that Jesus will be resurrected? You can't find one. Just. No problem. If you say I don't know, I'll come back next week and I'll give it to you. No problem. Would you concede that? I told you that I didn't. I didn't have like a specific. Oh, so ask your question. You don't answer. Right. Very good. Very good. That's it. That's all I want to hear. The story of Jonah came to mind. Right. Jesus so, uh, very good. So now you can say, let's go to the sign of Jonah. Yeah? Let's go to the sign of Jonah now. Right. That you brought up now. So you've conceded that. Look. I don't have any evidence that there is an I'm not saying problem. there is no evidence. Good. So come next week. Um, yeah. No problem. Come next week. I'm, I'm just here. saying I couldn't give you something right now. No problem. And that's a very honourable uh, response. Because even as a Muslim, if you ask me such a question about Islam and I don't know, I have to say I don't know. Well, I'm not going to just make something up. Very good. That's it. I, I'm, I'm glad we're on the same page. Okay. So now you mentioned about the sign of Jonah. Right. So you quoted from Matthew chapter 12, verse 14, correct? That the, the Jews are asking for a sign, correct? And what did Jesus say? You evil and adulterous generation, you seek after a sign? No man has ever given to you about the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now, I want to ask you this question. Who was this sign for? Sorry. Who was this sign for? Who was who was asking for the sign? Yeah, who was asking for the sign in the first place? The Jews. The Jews asked for the sign, right? Okay. So Jesus is giving them a sign as a proof that, according to you, he will die. He will die, and he'll be resurrected on the third day. Correct. So my question to you is, why didn't Jesus appear to the Jews? after the resurrection. Why didn't he appear to the Jews? Yeah, if this sign was for Jews, he no he didn't. Where? And Show me. Because the first believers were Jews and he appeared to over 500 of them. No, 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 you're not getting the point. I am. I just answered. Good, good. I'm asking you, who asked for the sign? Yeah. The Jews asked for a sign. So Jesus says, my sign is like the yeah. sign of Jonah. Yeah, that three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, correct? Right. So. Would you expect to the religious leaders? Good, good. So would you they were, they were right, hypocrites? Right. So so my question to you is if the Jews are asking for this sign and Jesus said I'm gonna fulfill this sign, do you not think that Jesus will appear to the Jews again and say, Look, I'm resurrected? But he didn't. But he didn't. This is what I'm saying. They they were Jews. This is only followers for Jews. No, you're not getting the point. Jews Jews is asking for the sign of uh, for a sign. Jesus says that, look, you're going to try and kill me, you're going to try and crucify me, but I'm going to be resurrected three days and three nights. Yeah. Right. So he, he was talking right. to the religious leaders that right. were refusing his message. Good. So was this sign, was this sign meant to be convinced for the disciples or was it meant to be a convincing proof for the Jews? 
So the, the, the sign was, it was all, it was there. Like, no, no, no. it happened, it was in the Old Testament. No, 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 I'm asking, you, no, no I'm asking you the sign. The sign of Jonah that Jesus is, is talking about, is yeah. that a sign that is meant to be a proof for the disciples? So, or is it for the Jews? So I think it's the same thing as I was saying earlier, like where he told them, you search the scriptures, but you fail to see they point to me. Because if they'd read the scriptures correctly, they yeah. would have known that he was the one that was prophesied about, that brought no, but you, you, No, away. but you're the one that brought up the sign of Jonah, not me, correct? You're the one that brought up. So I'm asking you the question, if the Jews asked for a sign, and Jesus said, my sign is the sign of Jonah, was this proof supposed to convince the disciples of Jesus? Or was this supposed to be convincing proof for the Jews? No, I think basically what you're saying is that they, they should have known about that because it's in the scriptures. No, it's not. But no, it's not. I asked you again. You can't, okay, at this moment in time, you have to suspend any of your judgment right now because you can't find me any prophecy in the Old Testament where Jesus will be resurrected on the third day. There no, is I mean a, about, okay? about Jonah is in the Old Testament, no, in their scriptures. The story of Jonah. So, yeah. But I'm talking about the sign that was given. Who was the sign given to? Was it given to the disciples or was it given to the Jews? The Jews. The Jews. The Jews. The Jews asked for a sign, Sorry, correct? Brother. So Jesus, peace be upon him, uh, no. if he wants to prove that he was, if he wants to prove that he was resurrected, he should appear to the Jews, and the Jews will shut their mouth, correct? Just like, for example, just like, for example, it, many times Jesus, peace be upon him, used to refute them, correct? So why did he just appear to the Jews again and say, look? I'm resurrected, but he didn't, he disappeared. You believe in the Pentecostal, after 50 days he's ascended, and now the Jews say, well, where is Jesus now? But he appeared to over 500 people who were, there was, there was Jewish but, people. But who asked for the sign? Not the 500 people, who asked for the sign? The Jews, the enemies of Jesus, they asked for the sign. So why didn't Jesus appear to the enemies and say, look, I'm resurrected? But he didn't. So but now my, there's a bit of suspicious accounts. Like, there was over 500 witnesses. Why, like, why is that? And why should I why trust, not why should I trust it? Why should I trust Matthew's gospel? Why should you tra trust what? Yeah, why should I trust Matthew's gospel? Give me one good reason. Because the Quran tells you to. The Quran tells you. By the way, <laughs> I want to make this very, very clear. The Injil that we believe in is the revelation given to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Okay. Exactly the same manner that the Quran was given to the last and final message of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Okay? The four Gospels are just the biography of the life and teachings of Jesus. That's got nothing to, that's not the way how the Injil is depicted. The Injil that we believe in is the direct revelation given to Jesus, the direct words of God given to him. When you read the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it talks about the biography and teachings of Jesus, which is equivalent to Hadith. It's equivalent to Hadith, the sayings and the actions of the Prophet. Do you understand? So it's, it's a false equivocation for you to say that the Injil here is referring to the four Gospels. No way does he say that. That's your misunderstanding. We believe but, that the Injil, the Torah, was given to Jesus and Moses' people respectively, exactly the same way how the Prophet Muhammad Sassan received the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran says that the Christians have the Injil, yeah. and it's the same Injil that they had back then when that was written. So it's the same. How today. do you know that's written? How because you know? they had the Injil then, it's in the museum. Which so, Injil? Which Injil? They, yeah, but they still, they had it then. You do know, there's, uh, you do know, it's not only Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. There are over 50 different Gospels. So which one? You have yeah, the, I mean, the you one, have, the one, one we to, use today is no, the same the one they used your, in So why is your, co why is your corpus right? What, what about the, well, what, uh, what about the Ethiopians? It's not right, the Quran's wrong. But hang on, the <laughs> Injil, the Injil first of all is singular. Mm -hmm. The Injil, the Gospel, one. Not plural. How many Gospels do you have? How many Gospels? Yeah, how many Gospels do you have? One, two, three, four? Four. So how can you then say the Injil is referring to the, to the New Testament? And by the way, according to Sidney, who is a professor of uh, Christianity, uh, uh, um, Christian, the Arab Christianity yeah. and Islam, he stated that the Bible did not circulate around the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He didn't, sur he didn't surround that. So definitely the Injil is not referring to the but, New Testament. But the Quran says that the Christians have the Injil and right. they can go... So Warakab bin Nawful, you yeah. must have heard his name, Warakab bin Nawful. He was a cousin of Khadija. Uh -huh. yeah? He was the first person to accept Islam. Why? Because he says that in my book I found that another prophet will come. And he's the fulfillment. He's an historian. Yeah. He doesn't believe in the New Testament. So what you're talking about is a different Injil. Yeah? 
So there are two. There, 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 so we believe in the original pristine revelation given to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Okay. But that injil is lost. Whether it's written or not, we don't know. We yeah, don't speculate that. My, my question would be: If the Quran says that the Christians can look at the injil, but you're telling me the injil is lost. By the way, do you know? Yeah, good, is good. The Quran, the eternal word. Of good, God? good. By the way, by the way, I want to make this very clear. We Muslims can use the Bible. Do you know why? We can use the Bible because we already accept your prophets. We already accept Moses, Abraham, Jesus as prophets of God, right? However, we, however, we have the we have the we have the liberty to differentiate what words of God, what words may be true, what words are not. Because yeah. we use the Quran as the Muhammad, the quality control over the previous scriptures. But you as a Christian, you cannot use the Quran to substantiate your belief. You know why? You don't believe the Prophet Muhammad says to be a true prophet. You consider to be a liar. So why would you take the words of a liar to support your belief? But why are you taking things out of the Bible? And... You, didn't listen my, you didn't listen to my response, did you? We Muslims already affirmed the, the, the Old Testament prophets. Yeah, yeah, we affirm Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Noah, right? But you quote to me the New Testament and then you're saying that... This no, is no, 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 listen, listen to what I said. I said the Quran mentioned in chapter 5 verse 48 that the Quran is a quality control over the previous scriptures. So we have now to, we have no doubt to that there may be some remnants of truth, some remnants of truth, but it's still corrupted. Okay, now we have no problem at all to accept the previous prophets. Why? Because that's one of the six articles of our faith to believe in the Rusul, in the messengers. So it's, a, it's part of our faith to believe in Jesus, peace be upon him, as one of the mighty messengers of God, as the Messiah, right? So therefore, we have the liberty to go into your books and distinguish, okay, what parts is confirmed with the Quran? We have no problem accepting it. What parts doesn't affirm the Quran? We reject it. Anything in between, we neither believe nor do we disbelieve. You don't have that liberty when it comes to the Quran. You don't believe in Prophet Muhammad Sassu to be a true prophet, so therefore you cannot use the Quran to substantiate your belief. Does that make sense? I'm just to what yeah, sense. does that mean? Does that make sense? So how can you use the word of a liar, which you, you consider Prophet Muhammad Sassu to be a false prophet, correct? You consider to be a false prophet, you as well. Yeah, both of you. So how can you use, how can you substantiate your belief by using the words of a liar? 